Breadbox Media Programming is brought to you by... Finding someone on an online Catholic dating site shouldn't be like shopping for a blender. So why do most dating sites leave you feeling like you're shopping for a spouse? At Catholic Singles, we connect members through our unique user polls and activities, which help you discover other members and their personalities and interests. Because you're a person, not a profile picture. So stop shopping and start discerning. Trust your love story to the original Catholic dating site and use the promo code BREADBOX at checkout for 20% off at catholicsingles.com. Well, hey, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Lisa Hendy and Friends. Today, we have, uh, in an exciting turn of fate, two new friends to the show to join us for a conversation. And so I'm really looking forward to sharing their work with you today. Joining us are Mary Rose and Ryan Verrett. And the Verrett's are the founders of Witness to Love and the authors of Witness to Love, How to Help the Next Generation Build Marriages that Survive and Thrive. Ryan and Mary Rose speak on issues regarding evangelization, marriage, natural family planning, miscarriage, and medical ethics. They reside in the heart of Cajun country with their five children, and their passion is teaching couples to share their marriage with others. Welcome to the show, Mary Rose and Ryan Verrett. Thank you for having Thank you. us. Oh, it's a real treat and and really fun always to connect with new people and to learn about um, this great work that you're doing. And I, I think I'm going to try and bounce my questions back and forth just so that we uh, we don't avoid Ryan because my tendency would be to ask Mary Rose all the questions. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ryan, let me have you start out, first of all, by telling us how you um, as a couple got involved in this work that you're doing. Definitely the Holy Spirit. The uh, I think both of us came from a background um, that uh, Christ showed the uh, way that he can redeem and make uh, relationships new. came from a background of um, where there was some uh, messiness of divorce and grandparents and parents and, and siblings and kind of extended relatives. And I think when we, when we, met, we met each other we, and meeting each other kind of within the church and with, it was surrounded by so many beautiful vocations and when Christ kind of invited us to the sacrament of matrimony, I think we, we, uh, it was clear for us that um, we wanted to do this in him and through him and, uh, and, and have God, the father is going to be a part of this. And so I think definitely this was a, uh, um, a, a, a relationship and a marriage and ministry that came out of um, Christ's ability to make all things new. Beautiful. Mary Rose, I should have asked this question first, but how long have you guys been married and what are the ages of the kids? <laughs> um, we've been married uh, 11 years and I think that the quarantine may have added a few extra years. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and we have uh, five kids. We have a 10 year old, a nine year old, a almost seven-year-old, a three-year-old, and a one-year-old. Oh, so, my goodness. Yes, the, the domestic church bells don't always ring, like, right when you think they should ring. So, you, know, you never yeah. know. <laughs> Three was supposed to be napping during this this uh, recording, and they, they happen to be up right now. So, <laughs> Well, bring them in. Let's let them be a part of the show. No, that's awesome. I mean, that's the reality, isn't it? And I think, actually, that our conversation is really timely because so many families are feeling, well, as you and I record, we're just at the end of May. This will probably um, launch a little bit later in June. But, you know, we're feeling the pinch of this, aren't we, Ryan? And, and it's really pointing to to the need for our domestic churches to be strong. So I, I guess I want to ask you, I mean, how the book came about and, and where this fits into the overall ministry. The book came about when uh, leaving uh, Maris and I were in serving kind of at the, at the diocese um, with marriage prep. And we were the oftentimes the coordinator of the coordinating couple of the, of the conference Mm -hmm. and, uh, and giving you know, talks. giving the talks and organizing the other volunteer speakers. And as Archbishop Lori reminded us, and I remember him saying in Baltimore once we were doing a training, he said it was, it was always a room that was too warm 
and the speakers were just okay, and the food <laughs> was, you know, just okay. And, our, and I was like, well, that that was what it was like in the 50s, and it was for us as well. And I think when, when Mary Rose uh, left uh, her part-time work with the diocese, and, and we were um, voluntold to start <laughs> working alongside this our, our pastor at the time, a young, awesome priest, um, you know, who showed up at 8 o'clock at night with a bottle of wine saying that he needed some help in marriage prep. He didn't like it anymore. <laughs> and so uh, the, the, the transition from going from the Dossison uh, presentation and thinking that we can squeeze as much information in to get these young people uh, back into the life of the church and their marriages on solid ground. We got to the parish level and realized they actually weren't there. No. <laughs> you know, that marriage prep is, has been one of those key failures. Uh, I hate to say it that way, but it's just kind of a key failure in many levels. Uh, primarily uh, not having a significant difference with regard to the divorce rate of secular uh, couples in the United States and also just low mass attendance. And I think the book came out of uh, a need to, to do a better job in those areas. And really trying to reach couples where they're at, because, you know, when we present from behind the podium, I, I think, you know, we, we all kind of know, you know, only so much evangelization can happen in a classroom setting with a podium. Um, but when it comes to sort of forming couples to, to live uh, their domestic church, um, they they could do all of that without ever having set foot in a physical church, um, a domestic church. It, it, all marriage prep could happen in a classroom uh, or with couples or clergy that they don't know, they've never met, and they might not ever meet again. And so just, you know, that in the long run wasn't playing out in a way where couples were going to church and staying married. Um, the, the Catholic divorce rate, there's only a 2% different mm -hmm. from the uh, national divorce rate at five years after the wedding day. So the national average is 25% divorce at five years after the wedding day. And the Catholic is 23. So, I really love Mary Rose that you're sharing these statistics, both because they're important for us to know. And also because it shows that this is sort of a data driven and, you know, a well thought out approach um, that you're taking. I want to ask you about the Be Light virtual date night series. Can you tell me a little bit more about this project and, you know, what what's involved and why it's so special and unique? Absolutely. Well, I, I think that um, the there's a lot of great marriage enrichment out there. There's a lot of great content. There's a lot of great resources. But the, the Be Light Date Night series um, was was two things. One, it's something that we were putting together for all you know couples who've gone through Witness to Love, both mentors and newly married couples. But we saw kind of you know just with the pandemic and the quarantine, and a lot of marriages were struggling. Um, and uh, Ryan always says, kept, keeps saying that the, the quarantine was a relationship accelerator for people. So if you were going, <laughs> it was for us. If you were going in the right direction, you got, you know, you could grow. But if, if there were some bumps in the road, you could really veer off course. And so we were trying to help take all that extra time that people were spending together, you know, in the pressure cooker and, and help uh, really just have some good light come from that and some, some, uh, Something that people could look back and say, wow, I'm so glad I did that. That changed the course of our marriage. And so we got together five uh, family life diocesan and family life directors and their spouses who really understood sort of this whole dynamic that, that we've been sharing about marriage prep and why really a lot of it has to take place in, in people's homes and the domestic church and just that wouldn't judge people that could speak to them where they were at. So we got them, these five directors and their spouses together. Um, and we, we went through this process that in witness to love, this is really kind of what we have seen bear fruit and the process of evangelization that uh, has made the greatest difference in people's lives is where you start with, um, helping people to understand belonging, um, then, uh, believing, then becoming, then be attitude and then be light. And so uh, it's it's really um, putting flesh on the bones of what we already knew was important for evangelization, but applying that to marriage formation. And uh, it just the the feedback and the responses that we've heard from people. Um, I mean, it, it definitely saved some marriage, changed some lives. Um, but it's you know it's just it's a, it's in our app. Uh, it's a web app, and so people register through our website. It's witness to love org. The Be Light uh, date night is right on the home page. They click on it, they register, and they, they get to watch these five videos. Uh, they can do it five days, five weeks, however they want to do it at their own pace. 
and um, there's three discuss discussion questions for each couple to discuss, and then there's one question for them to discuss in a small group if they're doing this with other couple friends, either in person or virtually. So this doesn't necessarily, I'm just thinking we're talking right now, but these are recordings and folks who might be listening to the podcast six months from now can actually go back and, and access this content. It's not going to be something that's going to go away, right? Absolutely. So they, it can be accessed at any time. We're also uh, very soon releasing um, by mid-June the Spanish Be Light Date Night series. And so very similar set up with registration, the five nights, the discussion questions. Um, and we, it, it will be available at any point. But then also each month we'll be releasing like an additional date night moving forward for, you know, at least the next five years while we go through this, these year, the year of belonging, um, believing. So we're, we're going to just move through this. Beautiful. Uh, Brian, I want to ask you the question that I know um, some of my listeners are are asking in their hearts and their minds. Um, this is all really wonderful for couples like you guys that are so equally yoked in your faith and enthusiastic and coming into it, you know, with this sense of shared mission. But how um, how can we minister to families where maybe there's one person who's active in their faith and the other isn't? How can that person who really longs for this? in their marriage, you know, maybe gently approach their spouse with the idea to participate in something like this? It's a great question. That's something that uh, we, we pray through and uh, it's a kind of an area that comes up often. I, I think, um, you know, Witness Love is founded in a, the realization that the, uh, uh, the, the church has a great opportunity to, to present things in a, the faith and the, 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 effect, the gift of the sacraments in a catechumenate way and witness to love is a is a catechumenate approach to marriage formation it's a catechumenate approach in a sense it's very much like like if you read priscilla and aquila and uh, the early church of, of of the necessity of modeling and witnessing marriage so the 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 way um we felt kind of guided in into this project and how you know this this apostolate um fits that that particular need um over time very gradual but the the best way uh, that couples, you know, in particular one who is um, not uh, maybe exactly on the same page as, as the other. And we've seen this. Um, this I, I give you an example. There's a, a couple that we know and we, we knew them initially in church. And she, when we first met them nine years ago, they were going, she was going to mass by herself with her two sons. Um, and uh, and we, we went over to the house a couple of times and he wasn't going, going to mass. At time, at that time, um, but then at, at some point he started. She, as she started doing more and, and getting to know other couples within the church, and, her, and he started sort of tagging along. At first, he was real rough around the edges, and and, and now it's amazing to see. Though just the other night we were we were uh, with them and their children, and he uh, is so gentle and, and kind now, um, and and engaged. And all I know is that it didn't take a lot of information. It didn't. It wasn't a lot of reading on his part. Um, I think I had to do sometimes the pastor go and play basketball with him and some other guys, and then him just sort of seeing that this is a this is a this is a gift. His marriage was a gift, um, and you just see that there's a, like a clarity in his eyes. I think that model of of using relationships. Very much the model of the incarnation, right? I remember Father Benedict Rochelle would say rules without relationships lead to rebellion. But I think it, w what we need is that there needs to be sort of a uh, emphasis on virtuous relationships rooted in Christ that um, that reflect a, 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 a sort of the hospitality of like the, the the prodigal son with the father. Something that this is a place that you can you can come back to no matter what your story is. Uh, and that it's going to it's going to be good and to be an introduction to that good life. So I hope that answer your question. But I, I want to because we so, we see this over and over again, that the best way to evangelize is for them to see it. And to, in particular within marriage, for them to see marriages that are that are committed and that are bearing fruit in many ways.
I, I asked that question because um, in many ways, the story that you just sold kind of resembles my love story with my husband. We met in college and were married in a Catholic wedding, but he wasn't Catholic at the time and didn't come into the church until about 17 years into our marriage. And I credit largely the Knights of Columbus and Catholic school dads at our parish for, first of all, praying intentionally for my husband, but then also just being so generous in their outreach to him. And it was never anything that was pressured or or anything like that. It was just a friendship. And then, you know, that leads to a, a community and a brotherhood. And I know they all rejoiced, you know, when he um, mm-hmm. came into the church. So it's, it's been a great blessing, but my, my heart is always sensitive to that, to that. Mary Rose. Um, and oftentimes it will, I don't want to generalize here, but oftentimes it's the, it's the woman who, <laughs> who desires something like this, um, for marriage and has to kind of convince, um, her husband to participate. But I guess, um, maybe you could, could you offer some thoughts on how to just kind of gently start that conversation? If, if you want this, regardless of where you are in your faith journey, if you're the husband or the wife, if you want to do something like this, how should you bring it to your marriage conversation? I think the, the, the date night is really, uh, you know, definitely it, it's fun. It's, uh, it's it's really speaks to the to the average couple and I, I do know that there were there were many couples who went through it where like the wife or the husband signed them up and you're right I mean I would say often it was the wife um, who signed them up for the date night and um, you know said you know hey I've signed us up for this you know maybe could we go through it with a, another couple friend and so um, I think a, you know a great way to sort of do a lead and say hey you know I was thinking we could do this date night with a, a few of our our friends you know just something to, to talk about and to share. So, um, you know, you know, maybe we could do this together. And so I think sometimes doing it with, with other, uh, other, you know, couples that are friends is going to make it more, um, accessible, tangible and attractive, um, to, especially to guys. So I think, again, there's no point where like there's this deep forced, deep share with other couples. It's, it's the questions for the group, you know, conversation are not, um, that you can go as deep as you want, I guess is is to say. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we, we have one couple that signed up, the wife signed up and, uh, they were, they were separated and they were, you know, planning to, to finish the divorce paperwork. And, uh, the wife just during the quarantine, they were stuck together and the wife said, well, you know, it's, I signed us up for this. I just, I thought it couldn't hurt. <laughs> and, um, they are now, um, back together working on their relationship and, uh, and a couple from a neighboring parish that it went through the date night series is mentoring them. Oh, that's so beautiful. What a great story. Well, I could talk to you guys all day, but unfortunately we don't have that much time. Ryan, I do want to ask you um, to kind of walk everybody through kind of specifically what the nights look like and, you know, logistically how it works. And then also kind of just to let us know if there's anything else that we haven't talked about that we should know about the Be Light or Witness to Love. Well, uh, the domestic church bells were ringing and Ryan oh, went to grab well. the ringing bell. So <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, but uh, I mean, I, I can definitely walk you through yeah. here. He is on his way back. Um, but uh, what, here, he is back. So, I, so I love this and, and <laughs> be affirmed in the call to the fact that he went to go take care of whatever it was. It's awesome. sort of like boxing. You know? <laughs> <laughs> tag team, tag team wrestling. So Ryan, I was just asking kind of um, what it looks like when somebody signs up with this, like how logistically it looks. And then, you know, what else we need to know about witness to love? When we uh, we went through a phase, always trying to make this as simple as possible, and uh, and we at the same time we also were keen on the idea that we we don't want to just provide something that just seems like another Catholic thing to be consumed, and so the you know when when people come into into this and in, into the app, it's it's very simple, it's it's free, it's easy to share, uh, and they just kind of click on the link and register, uh, and hopefully you know more parishes, which we've seen you know all over the U.S. and and other other nations now, is that you can. You can just easily do this and serve a parish can coordinate this or a diocese and people can can plug in. But I think in addition to that, yes, like what what you know about witness to love is I think the this Be Light Date Night series is is the fruit of uh, our 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 desire to create and 
to present um, amidst the goge of the sacrament of matrimony. I think, as I said earlier, we live in a catechumen age of the faith. Not everybody is going to be a classically Catholic trained couple and uh, just hanging around the church all the time and having priests over for nice conversations. But I think that this is such a great opportunity for the church at this moment um, where many churches have been closed and, and to distinguish itself. And I think as a priest to early on when when Islam was sort of coming together, he said, you know, the church really needs to be our the homes need to be a missionary outpost of the local parish. Mm -hmm. And so with the service of witness to love is helping uh, homes to see themselves as in couples, as evangelizing spouses, as Pope Francis says, and to be a, a place that will, you know, continue to bring light and uh, the uh, the gospel and live the gospel in a way that will hopefully, God willing, bring people back into the life, the sacramental life of the church and a parish so that we can we can not just keep buildings open, but we can be thriving in, in mission and renewing communities. I love that. I think that, you know, our hearts are longing to go back to church. Some people have. I I will be away for a while because out here in California, things are a bit different. But I love that we're recognizing the need um, for church to not just be that one hour on Sunday, but to be all week long and especially in our hearts and our homes. Mary Rose, where is the best place for people to come if they want more information? How can they get in touch with you guys? They can go to uh, witness2love.org. Um, the Be Light Date Night series is right there on the home page. And, um, you know, we have f uh, free resources for parishes. Um, if you want to bring Witness to Love to your parish, you know, what does that look like? And um, definitely a lot of resources for marriage prep, a lot of couples who are you know, getting engaged and getting married right now and are, you know, stuck with, you know, not being, they can't go to a conference. They, you know, they're, they're so we have uh, resources for them to do marriage prep virtually, but still with a couple whose marriage they, uh, they admire and they want to be like. So, um, yeah, everything's there at witness to love.org. Definitely. So grateful to both of you for this beautiful work that you're doing and, um, just so excited to watch what you're doing and to see it grow. So thank you so much. Thank you. God bless. Well, friends, that is it for this week's episode of Lisa Hendy and friends. We are going to have um, all the show notes and links for you to get in touch with um, Ryan and Mary Rose Verrett and this beautiful work being done at witness to love.org. Just head over to my website, lisahendy.com for this week's show notes, as well as um, information on all of our previous guests and my contact information too. And if this podcast has been a blessing to you, I hope that you'll pass it along to a friend, um, especially when we're talking about the gift of marriage in our church, uh, that this is something that really can bless and uplift so many people. So I hope you have an awesome week and I'll see you next time. God bless. Looking for exceptional coffee delivered fresh to your door? We have the answer. Our friends at Grim Bean Coffee produce small batch artisan coffee using top tier coffee beans. The coffee is roasted when you order, guaranteeing the freshest coffee possible. Check out Bread Box Roasts, a new line of Catholic themed coffees available at www.grimbeancoffee.com forward slash Redbox Media. Experience coffee like never before.